And so then he's like, I'm gonna need you to sit over here. And I was like, oh, where you want me to sit? Oh, you want me to sit over in like the pen where you detain everybody? Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gun London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin, and today I am telling you about the time I got detained at a UK airport, as well as my tips and tricks for what not to do when entering the UK and going through customs and immigration. Okay, so I am filming this video sitting at home talking to you guys because I thought, you know what, this is a video I wanna do, but I am not about to bring my camera and microphone and uh, entire equipment into the UK customs and immigration hall, um, that doesn't sound like a good idea. So I'll talk to you from home about my experiences. And I find it kind of confusing if you have never traveled internationally on what exactly is customs? Does immigration come before? When do I get my luggage and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go over the differences between entering, uh, entering the country via the airport in the UK compared to what happens in the US. And I'm also gonna tell you my tips for how to get through smoothly and things not to do. And like I said, at the end of the video, I will tell you about the time that yes, I did get detained at a UK airport. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about how it works. So if you are coming to the UK from abroad, you are going to have to go through immigration and customs. If you're coming from Northern Ireland, you are still within the UK, so you don't go through this. But if you are coming from, again, another country like the US, Canada, Australia, you do need to go through customs and immigration. So how it works for the UK is you are going to get off the plane. The next thing that you're going to encounter before you pick up your luggage is going to be immigration. So you do not get your luggage before you go through immigration. So you're going to go into the immigration hall and there will be different lines for you to choose from depending on what type of passport you have, where it's from, whether you're a British citizen or elsewhere. In UK airports, they um, usually do have what they call e-gates. And so that is going to mean that you often bypass an actual immigration officer, but if the e-gate doesn't work, or if you have a child under 12, or if there is, you know, if they just decide to pull you out of line, then you might have to talk to an immigration officer. And so I'm gonna go into tips on this, on how to be prepared, but just have it in your mind. The first thing you're gonna do when you get off that plane is go through immigration. Once you have successfully gotten through immigration, at that point, you are then going to pick up your luggage. And so you're going to go to the, you know, the luggage belt that your airline has told you or has come over the loudspeaker. And, you know, there will also usually be like signs saying luggage belt six or, and do they call them luggage belts here? Luggage pickup. I, it's been so long since I've been to an airport, but you know, the place where you get your luggage. After that point, you are then going to go through customs. Now this is where it differs from the US, which I'll we'll talk about in a second. But in the UK, it's basically an honor system. So people get really confused because you basically have gone through immigration, you've collected your luggage, you're ready to exit into the regular airport, and you're going to see different doors that say different things on them. So it's going to say like, um, go through this door if you have something to declare, go through this door if you're from the EU and have nothing to declare, go through this door if you are from coming in from a non-EU country and have something to declare. Again, I haven't been to an airport in a long time, but this is how it was up until at least 2020. And so you just walk through the door. You don't actually usually speak to a person. There will be customs officers kind of hanging around looking at you and they can ask you to step aside and open your luggage. But for the most part, you're basically mostly just going to walk through the nothing to declare um, customs door and then you exit into the airport. Now. This throws a lot of Americans off guard because of the way it is when entering the US. So let's talk about entering the US. When you enter the US from abroad, whether you're a citizen or not, you are going to get off the plane and you are going to go through immigration first. A lot of places in the US now have an electronic system that you would 
kind of punch in some information and get your picture taken before then moving on to an immigration officer. I haven't been to a US airport that lets you bypass an immigration officer. Um, people can apply for like the like global travel permits and like special fast pass stuff, but for a regular traveler, you usually still need to speak to an immigration officer even if they do have an electronic system. Often they'll have an electronic system, you punch in some information, it gives you a printout, and you go to the immigration officer and they ask you questions just like they would in the UK if the e-gate wasn't working or if you don't qualify for the e-gate. The next step after that is to get your luggage, so that is the same. But the difference that I found is in the US, a lot of times when I'm entering from abroad, you actually will go to a customs officer and they're not usually going to open your luggage and search it or anything, but often they will, you know, double check. Have you brought in X, Y, and Z that you're not supposed to? Um, and you usually will speak to a person that kind of then gives you the pass to go on into the regular airport arrival section. So that differs from the UK in that the American system entering internationally is definitely usually not an honor system. It's kind of an intimidating experience where you're like, I know I haven't brought anything that I shouldn't, but like you just get a little bit worried that, you know, you have to go through all these layers of humans. Whereas in the UK, at this point, because of the e-gates, you could literally land, go through immigration without speaking to a person, pick up your luggage and go through customs without speaking to anybody. So that is how the different um, international arrival systems work. But I also wanted to talk about the things that you can do to get through customs and immigration without having a problem. Okay, tip number one, come prepared with things written down on paper. So you're gonna wanna write down the address of the place you're staying on paper. Do not put it in your phone because what if your phone dies? Um, if you need any printouts, maybe you're on a visa and they want your bank account, it, well, not like your bank account details, but your bank statements to show that you have enough money. Maybe you have a student letter from your university. Have all of that stuff in paper form written down as well as emailed to you and as well as on your phone. Don't just rely on one or the other, but often I really find like maybe the seat back charger in your flight didn't work the whole time and your phone is now dead and the address you were staying on is there and you don't remember what it is. A, that's gonna be a problem getting an Uber or taxi to that place, but also it's going to be a problem if you need to speak to an immigration officer and they're wondering where you're staying. The next tip is don't be on your phone or giving anybody a reason to question you or be angry or tell you stop doing that. This is just like good life advice, but also great advice for when you're trying to get through customs and immigration. A lot of times you'll see signs that say, do not use your phone, like do not call your mom from the line of immigration put your stuff away, get in line, like you're almost at the end of your journey, but you just don't need any extra issues caused by doing something that the signs say you shouldn't be doing and it's better to just focus on getting through and then using your phone or technology. My next tip is to head straight to the immigration line from the plane. Do not pass go, do not go to the bathroom, do not wait for the 18 stragglers behind you. Like, especially when you're coming in on a full flight, there can be hundreds of people who also need to go through immigration with you. If those e-gates are down or if something happens, you are going to be really backed up. Like I've waited in line at immigration for almost two hours before. And the faster you can get there, I'm not saying like, you know, run through the airport crazily like you've missed your flight or something, but you want a pep step. You want to walk with a purpose. Do not get off the plane and think you have all the time in the world and then like mosey your way over to immigration. Just get there and then in the line, you can, you know, figure out your next steps. Try and go to the bathroom on the plane before you land. Just get to the line so that you're not ending up waiting for a long time. My next tip is if you are traveling with someone who, say you're traveling with someone who is a UK citizen who enters more easily than you, but you need to go to the actual immigration officers because you have a child under the age of 12 or you're from somewhere else, have that person go ahead of you to collect your luggage. That's going to make sure your luggage is safer. It's gonna save you time. And when the immigration officer asks, are you traveling with anyone? You can simply say, yes, I'm traveling with my friend who has gone ahead, they're a UK citizen, blah, blah, blah. The, the, the be all and end all of going through customs immigration is be honest. So 
whatever your purpose, you shouldn't be coming in if you're not coming in legally with a valid reason. So whatever the reason is, be upfront, be honest, have the information ready to show them if they ask for, and you really shouldn't have too many problems as long as all of those things are met. Again, it's not common to, you know, be detained at immigration, which I'm about to tell you my story about. I find it more intimidating coming into the US, to be honest. Coming into the UK is a little bit less stressful. Like I said, you could go the entire way without actually talking to a human. But even when you do, they tend to be a little bit friendlier, not all the time. And I'm not saying that the US immigration officers aren't friendly. I'm just saying I have a US passport and I'm a US citizen. And sometimes when I come back into the US, I still feel like I'm doing something wrong. And the, you know, interrogation that you get of why are you coming back? Like, why do I live in England? And I'm like having this crisis of like, why do I live in England? Um, and it just can get a lot more intimidating in the US, whereas coming into the UK can be a pretty friendly experience if you're doing it right. Okay, so now what you have been waiting for, I promised you I would tell you about the time that I was detained at immigration in the UK. This is a true story. So I had my renewed visa. So I'll talk about visas in another video, but basically I was on the second of my partner visas and I had just gotten that, that visa back. So it actually looks like um, it's not just in your passport, like on a page, it's an actual um, visa that you can hold like a card in your hands. So I go up to the desk and I was traveling by myself because I was coming back from the US and my husband was still in the UK and I had gone alone or something and I gave him my visa, I hadn't used this particular one before, and he's trying to scan it or like look at it with this like weird flashlight, and he just not saying anything, and usually it's a faster experience than this, and I'm like, what, why is this not working? What is happening? And so then he's like, I'm gonna need you to sit over here, and I was like, oh, where you want me to sit? Oh, you want me to sit over in like the pen where you detain everybody? And he's like, yeah, I, I'm gonna need you to sit over there. So in front of everybody, I am that person that everybody in the line at the airport is looking at, like, what did that person do? They're about to get deported back to their home country. And I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. I go over, I sit in this like glass pen with my luggage and you're not supposed to use your phone. So I can't tell my husband who's waiting for me at the airport, like what's going on. And it, it was like 20 or 30 minutes later and he finally came back and he was like, okay, you're good to go, um, but your visa is not attached electronically to the information that I needed. So basically they had sent me my visa, but he couldn't read anything on it electronically. So he had to basically go in these files or on his computers in the back and like look me up in some antiquated system. And I never actually knew if this was going to be an ongoing problem because it happened pretty much right before the pandemic. So I never actually got to travel. And uh, I've since been able to apply for my indefinite leave. So we'll never know if I would have been detained every single time I came in the country, but he did seem to think that was an option. But it was definitely a really strange experience finally being that person who is sitting there with your luggage, they have your passport, they have your information, everyone is looking at you and you're just like, am I about to be put back on a plane to the US? I mean, at the time it was probably winter and so I was like, honestly, if you wanna put me on a plane back to Florida, I'm not going to complain, but he ended up letting me in. So that is the time that I got detained at UK immigration. Okay, so that brings me to the end of my video on UK versus US immigration and customs. Again, this is more of a practical video for travelers who want to know what the experience is like. If you have any questions about the experience, if you're an anxious traveler or you are nervous, comment below and I'll be super happy to explain to you how it works or to answer your questions. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time.